Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast, where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers. On this episode of Transmissions, Takara Generation Selects King Poseidon is available in Australia only. Walmart has a listing for Netflix's War for Cybertron Deluxe Cheetor, and a listing has been found for Studio Series Devastator. Today is Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, and this is episode 382 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that hopes my little Megatron crushes my little Prime with her bare hooves. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Technology sucks. How was is, how is your week? Creator, producer, and star of Empire of Rust, Editor Mike. Awesome. And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. If you've got My Little Pony Transformers, do you still call them cutie marks? Let's talk Transformers. Maybe. <laughs> the cutie marks of the Autobot and Decepticon symbols. I don't know what a cutie mark is. That's okay, but Jeremy. <laughs> it's, it's very masculine of you. Congratulations. Honestly, I just don't know. <laughs> you never will with that attitude. <laughs> Mike, welcome back to the show. It's been a while. Definitely. Uh, thanks for, for having me. Glad you could join us. Uh, and we are all enjoying Empire. Well, I'm enjoying Empire of Rust. I don't know if these guys are, are listening. They should be. I've been, I've been telling them to, but. I fell behind. I don't know what's a good jumping on point. And now I'm just scared. I can't I can't get into it with so many episodes being behind now. I don't got that kind of time. There's only like 20 episodes. That's 20 hours, my, man. My current, my current podcast playlist is two days, 14 hours, 21 minutes, 36 seconds. So it's in there somewhere. I've actually caught up on my, on my playlists. <laughs> Considering I don't talk to anyone during the day. <laughs> You don't have to help teach kids. Yeah, see, that's yeah. the difference. Is I've got a, I got a wife and kid at home yeah. that I've got to still kind of give attention to, and my po podcasts have not been playing since this whole thing started. So everything's just backing up. They've got a, I, what I'm hearing is a lot of excuses, but anyway, Empire of Rust is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I at least have 25 percent of the the hosts. Well, you know, technically, oh, he counts for so much. <laughs> yeah, he's like 98%. <laughs> Actually, I think Yoshi is listening to it too, so I'll say 50%. <laughs> I'll make that assumption. Glad we glad we could get you for this week's uh, set of shows, and uh, we're going to have some fun. Absolutely. Although we are we are starting off on a bit of a down note. This was a really, uh, you know, really sad. Um, Fred Willard. So, uh, I mean, he's a well-known actor. He's been in lots of stuff. Uh, he's been in lots of sitcoms. He's been vo he's done voiceovers and lots of different things. Uh, and one of those things that he did was uh, Swindle in Transformers Animated, which, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, fast talking used car salesman kind of character. So kind of fit uh, Fred, Willard, Fred Willard's persona a little bit. But yeah, so this actor, he passed away at 86 years old. So had a good run, but yeah, it's, it's always sad to lose, uh, you know, lose someone who's done some work on Transformers. So he was very funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our condolences to his family and uh, yeah, wish them well. But yeah. So uh, moving on, let's bring it back up to uh, talking about Transformers. As always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who support the show and keep us going. Uh, you guys are awesome. We really appreciate all the support you give us. And uh, we thank you for your continued support. And anyone who is would like to become a Donatrion, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Another way to support the show is by buying some of our merchandise at our T public store, which is at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. And you can also check out K girl store at T public.com slash user slash superstar K. She's an awesome artist who's done a lot of art for us and she has some cool designs too. 
Uh, on RT Public Store, we've got new shirt designs. We've got masks. You can turn any of our designs into masks. Uh, those are hot commodities these days for, you know, lots of your going out in public needs. And uh, this week, there's another T Public Flash sale. So it's a quick one, though. It's just today, May 20th, and tomorrow, May 21st. So it's only for this show, won't even make it to alt mode. <laughs> so by the time you listen to alt mode, the sale's already over. Uh, but yeah, you've got today and tomorrow, thirty everything 35% off. So if you did want to get something from our store, this would be the time to do it. And thanks to the folks who bought some stuff last week. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, one of the perks of being a Donatron and supporting the show means you get access to some exclusive content that's only available for you guys. Uh, you, we get, we do record some news updates during the week. If, uh, there's breaking news after we've recorded the podcast. So Jeremy and Daryl have been, uh, have been keeping up with that. And we also have some uncut versions of empire of rust episodes. So Mike releases the audio with all the extra outtakes still in there. And this week, Empire of Rust episode 23 is getting its uncut ex version exclusive for the Donatron. So episode 23 came out last week, and now we've got the uncut version. With all of the the jokes that were cut, <laughs> all the comments that were cut, everything that I found not to be appropriate, <laughs> we left it in there. But that's only for the Donatron, so, you know. Got to pay to play, right? Exactly, exactly. It's in the contract. <laughs> It is in the contract. Uh, speaking of Donatrons, we got some feedback on Empire of Rust uh, from one of uh, your biggest fans, Mike, uh, Robin, on Twitter. He's been really enjoying Empire of Rust. Uh, he's, he, I think he, it's even it's it's number one on his uh, his transmissions adjacent podcast. It's even it's, I think it's above transmissions now. <laughs> So he sent us a tweet. He said, uh, you know, I love you guys and look forward to the shows, but you literally, uh, but, oh, I, but I literally cannot wait for Empire of Rust each time. If it's every <laughs> other week, could we get another story going on the other weeks? It's bloody brilliant. I actually didn't think I'd be into it, but it rocks. Uh, yes, it does, doesn't it? Damn right. Ah, yeah, and unfortunately, it's just getting everyone scheduled, uh, getting everyone scheduled for like a once a month recording session is is tough enough. And I can't imagine being able to schedule anything even like twice a month. It, it would be it'd be rough. Uh, unfortunately, all of the, the players have day jobs and they don't have schedules that really that really go like a nine to five or like an eight to six kind of job. So. Uh, unfortunately, the the timing and the schedule is always is always tricky. So that's the only reason I was we were able to to kind of get everything set the way it was is because we had that like once a once a month set time for recording. Um, and yeah, we've uh, we've sometimes gotten like up to like three episodes in a session, but pretty much when we record, we'll go through two sessions, and that's really all we have time for. Uh, I would love to do like more stuff. It's just. Yeah, I mean, there's just no time to get extra recordings. You do it in person too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somehow I don't think this this answer is going to satisfy Robin because <laughs> we did – we did uh, i did uh i did tweet back to him on transmission and i said you know we we uh we're glad you're enjoying the show but you know we can't work mike too hard and uh no one cares his reply was <laughs> it, well, his reply was his literal reply was work him till he bleeds rust <laughs> so uh so robin is unsympathetic to your to your your petty <laughs> scheduling uh, problems that, that that sounds like a you know sounds like just another excuse so he demands more empire of rust all the time <laughs> hey let's be honest if our positions were reversed i'd say screw you too <laughs> <laughs> get me my content <laughs> <laughs> Well, sorry, Robin. I, I think you're going to have to make do with the the twice uh, uh, biweekly schedule for the foreseeable future. But good stuff's coming up. But hey, now you and you get the unedited unedited ones in between. Yeah. So there you go. Just you know, you get you listen to it exactly, again. <laughs> exactly. 
All right. Now let's uh, let's get into talking about some toys. All right. First up this week, we've got uh, a new uh, a new, I guess, item announcement from. Uh, um, I guess where is it uh, coming from? No, I I don't really see any kind of like store att attached to this. But uh, one of the users on uh, TFW two thousand and five uh, found that we should be expecting a box set of st for Studio Series Devastator. Damn, this is going to be big. <laughs> this... <laughs> it was NDA Toys. Oh, okay. So that's a store. That's, store. that's in the UK. Uh, and yes. uh, yeah, so they are currently showing this thing to be uh, in pounds. 233 pounds. I don't know. It's it's expensive. So um, I don't know the conversion of that. I didn't do it in my head. So, But anyway, it's uh, it's a big big box it's uh, it's going to be 15.2 by 76.2 by 50.8 centimeters it's uh, it's quite large and uh, this is going to contain all eight figures to form studio series devastator uh, in the same colors in which they have been released uh, individually so there's no date set here just setting as coming soon it's uh, it's it's expected to be pretty, uh, pretty expensive. This kind of flies in the face of everyone who's individually buying these things, like myself. But are we really surprised? Not personally. Um, they got to find a way to get more life out of this mold. Uh, we've seen it that some of them are being recolored and re reissued. So that little uh, uh, pogo stick guy, I can't remember his name, but... I think it was Ram Rampage. Yeah, he's being reissued in yellow now, and being called some other name. So they're probably going to start doing this with a few other the, of the of the other figures. But uh, yeah, is uh, is anyone interested in you know maybe getting the entirety of the set all at once? I know we've talked about it individually, but the fact that you can buy it all at once here, this is a big. You know, a big purchase. You don't have to worry about hunting them down or missing out on any. Uh, Mike, we've never talked to you about it. What's your thoughts on them? It, it, it's a really interesting figure. Uh, this thing is massive, too. This is like, what, two feet tall or something? Oh, it's big, yeah. Okay, I, I love that this box set is coming out because, especially when, when I was still able to go to stores to actually buy stuff, I rarely found the Studio Series stuff in there uh, much, and... I certainly hadn't seen all of the, the Constructicons there at any one time. So fi if I wanted to find them all in my area, uh, it was difficult. So it is really it is really good that this set is coming out and that anyone who missed pieces or just wasn't able to get it can now get it. And that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, I don't really <laughs> like the look of the figure, so I'm certainly going to be passing on it. But I mean, it's like I said, it, it's it's good. I and mean, like it was said on on the on the cast like plenty of times. You know, this is this, this is this is people's Gen One. So uh, it is good that they can that they can get the set, and it's certainly great that they can uh, get it all at once if they uh, didn't get it on the uh, didn't hunt it individually. Um, but yeah, that, this is not for me certainly. But and it's good that it's out there. Okay, so you aren't you aren't actually getting any of the Studio Series uh, Devastator pieces. I think I have one Studio Series figure, and I think it was the leader size Grimlock that came out a while ago. Okay. Yeah, it was a Christmas gift. So, um, but yeah, so I got like one of them, and that was it. Uh, Jeremy, what are your thoughts on uh, the gift set aspect of this? We've t discussed the individual uh, pieces a bunch of times, but. You know, getting it as a gift set, uh, it looks like it's going to be around 400 bucks or so. I haven't done any of the math or converted anything of the pricing. It looks like, uh, according to Charles in the chat here, around 270 US. Just, I think, reasonable for something this big. Uh, Devastator gift set is something that has a long tradition in Transformers. So that's neat. Oh, yes. Uh, that's how I got my first Devastator uh, back in the day. And, you know, I think... For people that are, that this is their G1, if they haven't been hunting it or they've had problems, like Mike said, I think it, it's 
I, I always like being able to get all the pieces of a combiner all at once. Right. And just th the thrill of the hunt is not really an aspect of collecting that I enjoy anymore. Hmm. It does kind of suck for people that have been buying it individually, like you. Yep. I don't know if you're going to be getting that much more getting the gift set. Like, I don't think there's going to be that many extras. So when you pick up that last one or two that you need, is it, I don't, I don't even know if there's going to be cost savings there. Um, yeah. Um, but you're so far down the path, it's like you're not going to get this. Right. Point. No, you exactly. I'm pot committed now. And, uh, yeah. and, and a while back, I did do uh, a bunch of tweets about what the actual, like, um, the, the costs were towards this thing. Uh, because we've got uh, uh, two deluxes, four voyagers, and two leaders, and uh, I'll speculate that this is going to be something targeting the holiday season. So you know, you have the individual ones coming out. You know, right now, I don't anticipate this coming out right as the individual ones are finishing up because I think that would really upset people. Um, it's more likely this is going to be something targeting the holiday release. And that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Daryl, let me ask, is this going to end up being the same price as all the stuff you spent individually? I think it's around 240 bucks American for the individuals. It's, it's still, I, I don't know what the, uh, you're actually saving money buying them individually, I guess. So is it, you said it was, Two liters, four yeah, I voyagers, think I only, and two deluxes. I think I only counted two voyagers. So, okay, two two deluxes. That's twenty and twenty. That's forty. Two liters is a hundred. So that's one hundred and forty. And then four voyagers. Are voyagers thirty or forty? Or I believe they're. I believe they're forty. Okay, then that's one hundred and sixty plus one hundred and forty. That's three hundred. So you are saving some money if you got the box. Yeah, not cool. not a huge amount, but a little bit. You know, like I said, I, I think this is going to be for the holiday market, and I think that would be smart to space out so mm -hmm. it'll be off the shelves individually by the time this probably comes on. Yeah, the original tweet that uh, that I had gone and put out was a comparison between the uh, completed Studio Series Devastator and the uh, third party one, uh, Troublemaker. Remember that one we were talking about for a while there, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and how the uh, Studio Series One was going to come out to three hundred bucks or so, and uh, uh, this Troublemaker One was going to be like nine hundred dollars. Like it's just astronomically high by comparison. Sure, it looks better and it's you know probably better quality, but it's just you could buy three of these Studio Series Devastators for the price of the the Troublemaker. So, anywho, uh, Charles, do you have any thoughts to add to this? Uh, I mean, I we we're we're very well aware of your opinions on <laughs> <laughs> Revenge of the Fallen Devastator, <laughs> but uh, what about uh, uh, getting it as a gift set? Can you what What are your thoughts on on just you know throwing a gift set together for this thing? I, I it's nice, it's convenient to have them all in one package. It just, but it also like shows me how little I want this thing that it, you know that all these figures cost this much, and it's a figure I really don't like the look of so it's an easy pass for me but yeah sure. it's it's i mean i guess this is this is a good gift for eric crown over i guess <laughs> <laughs> like we all know that scorponok is the next titan class figure it's cheaper than this mm -hmm. but are they continuously throwing out figures that are now going to be next level expensive right we all know, yes, it's eight figures, and it's but it's it's in one box, so it's one purchase, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a Unicron at six hundred and seventy-five dollars or five seventy-five or whatever the hell it was, but these are figures that are now taking that that retail price point and just launching it into the stratosphere. Yeah, you can't get Unicron in the stores, but you can get this. And you can get uh, Scorponok. How uh, how far do they are they going to push it? I mean, I think they're they're taking their cues from what's happening with Masterpiece, and to some extent, maybe they're they're seeing what's happening in third party. Like they're seeing people are willing to shell out 
significant amounts for for masterpiece and third party and maybe they think there's a market for these huge figures Mm -hmm. and i mean the titan class figures are i mean they've been doing this for several years now so i think they they see there's a market for that this is yeah i mean this is a hundred dollars above the titan class figure but they also you know it's 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 also marketed as eight figures and you know that combine into one so Mm -hmm. i don't know i i mean i think they're gonna we're gonna see this experimentation where they're gonna see how far they can they can push the collector market uh because they Mm -hmm. see i i mean hasbro doesn't talk about third party but i'm sure they see what's happening in third party and they see people still buying third party stuff and paying a lot more for third party if they if the quality is there if the engineering is there and has was going to say hey we can we can do engineering if you're willing to pony up the money sure and yeah they're going to test that Mm -hmm. the last point i was going to make about this is kind of following on you what you're going to say or what you just said yeah hasbro has the ability to put something like this out the the difference being between third party and hasbro is that if uh hasbro you know makes a mistake or doesn't not that they made a mistake, but they, if they price something too high, their stuff just isn't going to just sit on the shelf forever. You know, their stuff will eventually get discounted or end up at a place like an Ollie's or something like that, right? Where mm-hmm. somebody's going to lose some money on this. Whereas it's, if it's third party, right, it might end up being discounted at somewhere, right? But there's definitely not the amount that, that there's going to be made of these things. And that's going to be the main difference is that this is mass produced, third party isn't. And there's the te- there's the the chance that this thing could could fail sp- spectacularly because of the price point, right? Um, so we'll like you said, it's an experiment. We'll see how it goes. I'd love to see uh, something like this. Maybe not this exact thing because I'm already six out of eight figures committed. Um, but uh, I would like to see something in this like this in the future where it's limited. And and you know it's limited because they're not going to make many of them. But it's an interesting kind of experiment, and you can kind of see the 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 seeds of an idea here that they've they've got going on. But yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. this was supposed to be just a really quick little topic, and uh, it turned into something much bigger than that. Uh, I did want to talk about one other thing, and that was Iron Factory's EX thirty six R Chaos Raven, and it's their Legend Scale, the Fallen figure, and we've got some final product images of it. Uh, there is, uh, it looks good. This is a remold of their, uh, EX 36 tyrant Megatron figure. That was the one that you could kind of take apart and, and make into a whole bunch of different looking Megatrons with the, uh, accoutrement that it came with. So this guy still kind of, you know, transforms into a, uh, like a weird four footed tank. So the, the, the tank that Megatron turned into, but black and, and, and orange, but uh, he he looks pretty cool. Uh, he's got some really nice orange accents. Uh, the 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 clear translucent plastic that uh, makes up his uh, like the um, the little highlights of his of his body are really neat. Uh, some really dark purple on him as well. That uh, I don't know if I remember seeing on any other fallen figures before. But it looks good. It looks nice. Um, I've never really been much of a fan of the fallen. I don't know. I think it looks kind of cool. Let's start with Charles. What do you think of this? You're a very big fan of legends class figures and i know you love the fallen so i'm sure you're getting this <laughs> uh i mean it i i do like the look of this figure the orange highlights look good uh i <laughs> i am not a fan of the fallen actually i think uh, i'm i think the fallen has should have stayed inside war within and not like become a big part of the franchise the way it did what are you calling me a liar Yes. Yes, actually, I am. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is a good looking figure. Um, and I do like this version of the Fallen compared to when he became, I guess, Megatronus later on in other continuities. And instead of, you know, this kind of random dude on fire, I really hate I I don't like the Fallen, but I really hate the name Megatronus. I just think that's super dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Come on. Megatron is Megatron. He didn't name himself after some dude named Megatronus. That doesn't make any sense. So this this guy looks good. Uh, I like the cape. I like the accessories. I like the sword. I don't know if I'll ba- if I'll buy this. This might be this might have been an impulse buy if I was at a con. 
but since that's never going to happen again, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to pick this up. Okay, it might happen in 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Well, uh, Jeremy, if Simon Furman had come up with the name Megatronus and said that that was where Megatron got his name, do you think Charles would be into it then? As long as it was accompanied uh, by art by Jeff Seen. <laughs> right. There, okay. Hey, you know, Simon <laughs> Furman did come up with The Fallen, I'm, and I'm, I'm saying I don't well, like The Fallen. Uh, uh, he came up with The Fallen. I still don't <laughs> like The Fallen. Jeff Seen, your art. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Andrew Wildman art, who's my second favorite artist from from G one, and I it's still not, don't it's like not it. Not good enough. It's, not, it's still not good enough, I guess. This, this guy's really hard to please. What are your thoughts, Jeremy? Uh, I, I think this this character this design looks really cool. Kind of getting some Galvatron vibes from the headpiece. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's neat. Combining the whole Megatron Galvatron thing. I, I like the use of the translucent plastic. It, it looks like it's really kind of placed well with the right light hitting it. You know, I just, it's a nice effect and the cape being translucent, I think works really well on it. I, I also have never been a big fan of the character, but I wasn't going to buy this anyway <laughs> because it, it's just not in my budget right now to be spending on third party figures. Mm. But I, I appreciate the look of this figure. I think it, for fans of the character, I think they're getting something great. And and Mike, I, I you like you like ravens who are uh, chaotic, right? Sure. <laughs> I mean, do you know about any like orderly ravens? Ravens are dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're kind of bearing the lead in the question here, uh, Eric Daryl. I don't know. I, the only ravens I know are chaotic. Well, okay. <laughs> if you know something I don't, then please tell Maybe me. Maybe Canadian but, ravens are nice. You know that could be it. Yeah, yeah. Are your uh, are your ravens up there nice nice to you or you know do they like pick up your wallet if you drop it or something? They 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 cause no problems. I wouldn't say they're chaotic. So more neutral. So, so they send their dick ravens down here just like they send their dick geese. <laughs> <laughs> we we have the dick geese here too. Nice. Yes, I I I actually really like the look of the figure. Uh, I I love the customizability on a lot of the stuff. So like the it looks like it's got a, a bunch of like extra ports that AQ, you can move stuff around on. I I love the fact that you can transform that sword into a mace. That's kind of neat. Mm. And yeah, the uh, the translucent plastic for the flames. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I like it. I approve. Cool. All right. Well, if th that's all I brought to the show this week. Uh, Jeremy, what do you got for us? I have a crossover we never thought we'd see in toys. Hot off the news last week, um, not on our show, but just kind of hitting sites last week, was a My Little Pony um, Ghostbusters crossover. And in there was text mentioning a My Little Prime figure, and now we have pictures. Uh, this is a My Little Pony figure, non-transformable, just a My Little Pony tri figure painted up with uh, metallic red and blue paint to kind of look like a an Optimus Prime if Optimus Prime was a pony. I'm not a My Little Pony collector, but I imagine there there is enough crossover there that this will be popular with a a good segment of both fandoms. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl, we'll start with you, I guess. You have a daughter, so that I do. You are familiar with the the world of the ponies. What are your thoughts on this? Well, it's a uh, it's an interesting paint job. Weird thing is, is I think I think it's dumb. But I have a weird feeling that it's good, this one figure is going to be worth an absolute fortune because <laughs> it's going to be one of those things that hits the right market of, uh, mm -hmm. of just collectors. And it's just a weird little paint job on it. It's, it's just crazy enough to be collectible. And it's probably one of those things that was going to be a convention exclusive or something like that. Or I don't know. It's who knows what the initial, you know, life of this thing was supposed to be, but I have a strange feeling that this thing is, is probably going to be like a hundred and 150 bucks in like a year. Yeah. I, I would think you're probably right. I mean, especially I mean, like we saw with the Ghostbusters Transformers yeah. stuff, you're hitting two fandoms. So you're double your doubling your chances of it selling. Charles, I, I know you're super excited about the, the comic crossover that's coming up. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on, on the, the figure? 
Uh, it's it's cute, I guess. Uh, the the Autobot symbol is the cutie mark, so that the little that that's oh. that's where the little the the horses have a little mark on their on their butt that symbolizes you know their their little symbol. So he's got an Autobot symbol there, or she. I don't know if it's a he or a she, but uh, yeah, it's it's cute, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm I, I do like the look of the Autobot logo there, where it's kind of like painted on, it's like dripping. So yeah. I like. I like the look of that logo. Uh, I, I I wonder if uh, DJ Ronan will pick up the inevitable sparkle scream. That's the the next figure that comes out. <laughs> is that the next figure? Not, no. no, I think this is a, a from the text on the Amazon listing. There's the Ghostbusters one, this one, and a Power Ranger. I just made that up, but I, I but it's a good it's a good name. <laughs> I, but yeah, this is a. I mean. <laughs> Of course, you know I I am partial to figures that transform. So if they if they want to if mm-hmm. they really want me to buy this, they need to make it transform. I mean, pony to truck and back. Uh, oh. <laughs> All you need to do is get get that battle unicorn and mod it so it looks like a My Little Pony, and there you go. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. There you go. I, I would think if these sell really well, they'll go the other route, and we'll get some transforming ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've had the transforming Ghostbuster. Now we're we could get a transforming pony and then I'm sure they would do power Rangers since Hasbro owns that now. I don't know. I, I, I see Hasbro looking at all, all the ways they can take all their brands and mix them together. Mm-hmm. Mike, uh, what are your thoughts? It's interesting. Certainly. Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm wondering why they went with like the, the face kind of like they did. I wonder if they tried to do like a mask or something, like a face mask or something on it, it just didn't mm-hmm. work. I would imagine that they, they just have like one mold for their pony heads. Uh, true. But I mean, they could they do any number of, of things on it. Like yeah. they can do like a, not an accessory, but they can do like a little additional piece that they can kind of just like snap on there or something. But I mean, I, I do agree. There probably is just one, like one overall mold look for the body and then whatever separate pieces are, are separate pieces. Prime yeah. Prime has a mouth in all the new media these days, which I'm not a fan of. Oh, there's that. Yeah, I, I saw the like the paint dripping on the the Autobot symbol. I just it's not that it bothers me, but I just want to know why. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Like, why is it like well, painted on? Or why so is it... it's not a brand? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe someone just kind of saw her design and then just spray painted the Autobot logo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Quattro in the chat just said, uh, better than the siege battle damage. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you are right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they could, like, uh, yeah, they could have done like the red logo or something on it instead mm-hmm. and then had that as the mark or something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think they had so much red already. Yeah, maybe. It'll be interesting to, to watch this and see like what it comes out, uh, like what price it comes out at. And if Daryl's right on, you know, the, the aftermarket cost, what it shoots up to. Yeah, and I I think uh, I think you guys are right. This was likely supposed to be a convention exclusive of some kind. That just because no conventions, it just it's just getting. Or it's like, where is it being released on? Is it on like on Pulse or is it somewhere else? They haven't announced. It was an Amazon UK listing. Yeah, hmm. I could see it being Pulse, um, and I bet this was probably like a San Diego exclusive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, even though there are two like fandoms associated with this, I really can't see this working well as a mass market release because mm-hmm. I, I can't, uh, especially like, well, you know, I, I I can't say that because I know, I know a couple of people who would be real, who'd be really into it because it's pony, and then I know a bunch of people who'd be into it because it's Transformers. So I guess after track think- that, it probably would fly off the shelves pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're hitting that sweet spot of. Probably the the niche collector in both fandoms. So put them together, and then you know you you have enough to warrant the production run. Anyone know what the cost of a typical pony is? I'm I'm assuming this is going to be about fifteen bucks or so, maybe maybe twenty. I'm looking at it thinking I don't want this. Why would I want this? this is stupid. And <laughs> then I keep thinking like I would be kicking myself if I didn't buy it for fifteen bucks. And it ends up being worth a hundred bucks or one hundred and fifty bucks in a year or two. I, yeah, I just did a quick search on Amazon. And it seems like most of the the 
most of the ponies are around 15 to 20, like you said. Yeah. So being an ex- like a special one, they probably mark it up to 30. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I mean, uh, just judging from like convention exclusives and stuff. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, that's fair. Plus, there's a lot of pain apps on here. So I suppose yeah. like 30 or so is, is reasonable. All right. Well, that is all I brought this week. Uh, Mike, what do you got? So I am going to be talking about God Neptune. Uh, for those of you who do not know, God Neptune was a, a repaint of uh, – who was it? Uh, uh, it was King Poseidon in Japan, and it was per, uh, Piranacon here in the States. It was the combined form of the Seacons, and this character was in a Beast, one of the Beast Wars series in Japan, either Beast Wars 2 or Beast Wars uh, Neo. And was one of the – it was the, the big combiner, one of the big threats in the series. And Takara Tomi just revealed the uh, uh, final images here uh, for the Generation Selects God Neptune figure with a, a remolded Scylla figure. And, and, and yeah, so, um, so these are pretty much straight – these are almost straight repaints from the, the Seacons. Uh, I think the weapon – nope, the weapon is not new. It's it's just a, a repaint. Uh, again, the only f- the only figure that is completely changed or remolded is the uh, the Scylla figure, which is was a different character in uh, in Japan. Um, and yeah, so that is coming out. I don't think – oh, no, we do have a price. Uh, so it's going to be released in October for 22,000 yen, about 200 bucks uh, here in the U.S., and uh, they have one eighty five ninety nine on Hasbro Pulse. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Even a even a bit cheaper. Not bad. And uh, yeah, so um, so I'll ask you guys. Uh, does anyone have the Seacons set, or has anyone started collecting them at all? I have them all. The original G ones. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was there something wrong with having the originals? No. <laughs> but no one has uh, bought any of the new Seacons, right? No, I have not. What do you guys think of the uh, just the overall look of the, the figure? I think I like this paint design. I mean, there, there's a lot of white. That would be my only real complaint. Uh, but I like the gold and the teal. I think that works well together. Mm, definitely agree. And then you have, like I guess, like the brass coloring for... The trident and some of the accents, I think that that works really well because when you see like, you know, a lot of, I guess, like Atlantis type things, you usually see a lot of that color. I like a lot of this, just all that white. I think they probably could have done a little bit more, some paint apps or some stickers or something to break that up. But I don't know. I, I It looks good combined. The individual modes, I'm not as much of a fan of, but that's just... The characters, I just never really been a fan of those designs. But the combined mode, I really do like. What about you, Charles? Yeah, I'm not the bit so big on the Seacon designs in general. And uh, God, Neptune, I, I never watched Beast Wars second, so I don't really have any connection to this. But I, I do, I guess I do like the the remold, re-engineering of uh, the Scylla figure. So it's always good to have more uh, fembots. So. That's a cool figure, a cool redesign there, uh, but mm-hmm. that's not enough for me to to buy this whole box set. <laughs> um, but I mean, this is I, I'm happy for people who can get it. I mean, it's nice that they put it on Hasbro Pulse, so if you're in, uh, you know, if you're not in Japan, you can still get this figure and, and actually get it for cheaper than it would be to import it. Uh, so that's great. I mean, Hasbro Pulse seems to be really. Uh, targeting the collector market here and helping uh, get all those Japanese exclusive releases here. Especially like this was Takara Tomi Mall, which is exclusive in Japan. Yeah. So it's just our, our equivalent now. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So, I mean, that's positive. So I, that, that makes me confident that anything I see coming from Takara Tomi in the future, I'll be able to get easy access to it if I want to buy it. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the color scheme is nice. I, I think I do like this color scheme better than the original Seacon color scheme. Although, uh, you know, not having that sixth figure, uh, I don't know. I mean, why not include the sixth figure just just for for shits and giggles? 
I mean, I know it's, it wasn't because I don't think it was actually part of the show. Yeah, still throw it in there. <laughs> Charles has spoken, <laughs> <laughs> and I will be ignored. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's cool. I'm, I'm happy for the people who want God Neptune, and it's a, it looks like this is a good figure. Sorry for the people who are already collecting uh, the Piranicons and what uh, and feel like they're forced <laughs> to double dip. Am I seeing this right? That the entire set is a hundred and six or eighty six bucks. Are you looking on Hasbro Pulse right now? Yes, I am. Does it say $186? I guess so. I'm just wanting, trying to figure out if that's the in, for one guy or if that's all of them. That's for the entire set. It says God Neptune. It says this TT-GS10 G, G, thing too, so I'm not, I didn't know whether that was for one of the guys. Anyway, while you all have been discussing all of this nonsense, I have been looking on eBay and all this other stuff. So the Piranicon set from Generation Selects is going bonkers right now. People are losing their minds over this set. And recently it is the set of six has been selling for like between 600 and $800 for all six of them. It's ridiculous about how much this, this set is going for. How much did that set retail for initially? Well, you had to buy them individually. So uh -huh. you had to buy, I believe you could buy uh, two at a time. They released two at a time and you had to you could get in on on those two and then you had to wait and then you had to get in on another two and then you had to wait and then you had to you could get in on another two so so there's a lot of people in here that are trying to sell one of them or four of them or two or but most of them have all all six and they're selling them all but like they're going for seven hundred dollars easy that's a lot of dough now for hasbro pulse to come in and be like eh we can get you the all six, all f I guess it's five, all five of them of God Neptune for 186 bucks. Uh, that makes me feel pretty good about buying Devastator individually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so mine are, are definitely a lot lower than this. So if you can get this guy for 186 bucks, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty good deal. Now, my side of this whole thing is this figure is brand new. You know, it's not even out yet, actually. So on the flip side of that, if a actual G1 God Neptune gets listed on eBay, it actually tends to go for about 186 to 100 to 200 bucks US. So you could buy an actual G1 God Neptune, or you could buy this brand new one. For me, I'd go for the, the G1 version because it's the original. But, yeah, I get it. You want the new one, the one that's all f uh, shiny and new. But for the same price, maybe a little bit more, uh, I'd personally go for the original. But anyway. That's fair. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool set. Um, I, like I said, I do have the original Piranicon, all six pieces. all It's 100% complete. Actually, no, it's not. It's missing one claw. One claw for one dude it's missing. So I'm still looking Darryl for Daryl complete? Yes. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, Piranic my Piranicon is Daryl complete still. Uh, I am on the search for that. This is a cool thing. I, I'm, I'm happy that people have the ability to get this thing. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. I'm floored that Combiner Wars is still going in some way, shape, or form. I think after this, you've got uh, Monstructor... And then maybe you start moving into, like, the Japanese-only combiners, which is ridiculous, but whatever, bring Runs them on. The capes. Yeah. So, but it's cool. I think it's fine. I just, I feel bad for the people that are, are spending insane money on getting the Piranicon set when, uh, when this one's coming out now, and it's so much cheaper. The people who just put their bids in for that $700 set must be kicking themselves now. Well, you can probably get out of that, but yeah. So mm. there are there are there's one that uh, sold yesterday for eight hundred and sixty dollars. I feel bad for this person. Anywho, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's not for me. I'm not I'm not into combiner wars all that much. So it looks cool though. It's a lot of white plastic, so keep it out of the sun. <laughs> but uh, give me the G1 version any day. All right. Uh, to wrap this one up, uh, the 
King Poseidon set is listed on EB Games and a Zing exclusive for the Australian market. Uh, again, coming out in October for about $400 uh, Australian, uh, 250 uh, approximately 250 US. And uh, Takara Tomi Mall has put up the comic that usually goes with their new releases. Uh, both parts one and part two are on the Takara Tomi Mall's website, and you can go ahead and take a look at that online. Oh, hey, it has Banana Prime in it. <laughs> Not translated yet, unfortunately, but give it time. It will come out translated pretty soon, I imagine. And that is all I got. So, Charles, what do you got? All right, uh, I have rumors. So uh, we've got the Netflix War for Cybertron series coming up uh, very soon, hopefully in about a month or less than a month. And uh, Hasbro's rolling out a line of figures specifically branded for Netflix War for Cybertron. We saw that at Toy Fair earlier this year. Uh, and it, at first we thought it was just going to be, uh, you know, repackaged figures from War for Cybertron Siege that we've already seen. That's what it was. That's, you know, pretty much what we saw. But now we've got news of uh, listings in the Walmart system that indicate some additional figures. Uh, this comes from Zobavore. Uh, who I recognize that name as a poster on alt.toys.transformers, the news group. I didn't know news groups were still a thing. I used to, you know, hang out on the news. They are. Kind of. <laughs> I used to hang out <laughs> on those news groups back back in the day over 20 years ago, but apparently they're still going. You um, got to check and see if your account's still active. <laughs> well, there's no account. That's the thing. There's, it's it, yeah, there's yeah, no it's what? <laughs> then who's Zobavore? That's his screen name. It's not his. That's his. You know, he, he post with your email address. So you know, it was very. It was. It was a simpler yeah. time. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> this this was before everything was a web service. This has this had this. You know, was this was when the internet was not all routed through the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. It was the before time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the we've got listings for upcoming figures. Looks like we've got a Bumblebee. Uh, and uh, Quintesson, which we've already seen the Quintesson coming out for Earthrise, but looks like there's going to be one branded for the Netflix packaging. So I'm sure it'll be the same figure. Uh, then we've got Wheeljack and Impactor. So that's that's probably also just the same figures rebranded. Uh, we've got Red Alert, Barricade, Alita One. Alita One, I, I wonder if that'll just be uh, a repackage of the um, Power of the Primes Alita One figure. Uh, and then we've got Deep Cover, which uh, is the name given to a black repaint of Sideswipe in previous incarnations. So that's probably what this will be as well. Um, so uh, what stuck out for me in particular was the Deep Cover, which I wonder if, if in the show Sideswipe will go undercover and paint himself black or... Will it or not? I guess it's not. It's kind of blue and black, so it's not quite G2 Sideswipe, but... Uh, you know, a similar kind of idea. Is he going in deep cover? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that would be that, that would be kind of on the nose, wouldn't it? It'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm the Decepticon deep cover. You look a lot like that Autobot sideswipe. No, I'm deep no, cover. No, I don't. <laughs> He's like, yes. Yeah, so, so does Red Alert. <laughs> We'll see. I, I, I yeah, I, I wonder. <laughs> but the other one was Bumblebee. I, I, will we? Are we actually getting a new Bumblebee for this the War for Cybertron I, line? I think they've been holding him off. Yeah, long enough. I, I, we were sw swamped by Bumblebee for so long. I think they're kind of giving it a break, and he's going to come out and he's going to play a big role in the series. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Okay, so that. That's Jeremy's prediction, so mark be that a down. Mold of Cliff Jumper. <laughs> <laughs> In a shocking twist. <laughs> yeah, yep. And the Alita one is from Power of the Primes was a Voyager. And it's stating here oh. that it's a deluxe, right? So, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Well, in, in the, the news group post, uh, Zobavor guesses that she's a reef deco of Earthrise RC. Oh. Oh, mm. so I don't, I don't, I don't trust this Zobo War guy. 
<laughs> I'll vouch for him. <laughs> well, and, and we're getting a, a quintessence. No, oh, oh, Jeremy, you, you're hurting. You're, you you stabbed me in the back. <laughs> really, was it in the back? <laughs> no, I, I, okay, fair enough. You stabbed me in the front. <laughs> yeah, Quintesson. We're getting a Quintesson. But we, I mean, we, I already pre-ordered the Quintesson, so we know that's coming uh, in the Earthrise uh, set. So this is probably just the same figure. Yeah, with more battle damage. <laughs> probably. But I wonder if that means that the Quintessons will show up in the Netflix series. That 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 was not, you know, we we had not heard any rumblings about that. But I guess we'll see. The other uh, thing, uh, so this was a separate uh, a separate set of rumors, but also another listing in Walmart that we're also getting in the Netflix War for Cybertron Deluxe figures a Cheetor. Uh, so that would be cool. Uh, you know, uh, another Cheetor robotically designed Cheetor. Uh, like we, we did get one for the Cyberverse toy line, but you know, Cyberverse is a, is a lot simpler, less, uh, you know, less detailed engineering. So ha- getting a war for Cybertron version of Cheetor would be cool. I would, I would welcome that. Uh, I wonder in the show how they would justify having a robot Cheetah on Cybertron, but <laughs> Mike, what do you think of these rumors? Are you interested in any of these things? I might be interested in the Cheetor. I actually just finished like watching up. I just finished up watching the the Cyberverse, the Cyberverse stuff with um with Cheetor, and it, honestly, it's an it's an interesting character design. Not really a fan of the the characterization he he has, but I'd be interested in a in a Cheetor figure. The other ones, I think, a bit less interested in. Like, I, I already have uh, my masterpiece wheeljack, so I don't really need another one. Uh, a, a you know deep cover red alert. It's like mm, yeah, whatever kind of things. Uh, it really feels like barricade is probably going to be like a repaint of uh, of prowl smokescreen stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, the the cheetor seems interesting at least. Yeah, we already have a, re- a barricade figure. In War for Cybertron Siege, so definitely it'll just be probably repackaged of that. Unless they're going to do uh, like the the um, the MicroMaster version of him. Oh, but I mean this, but this is a deluxe, so. Oh right, right, right. Okay. So it'll oh, it'll just yeah. be the Prowl repaint uh, that they got they put out in in Siege. Well, hopefully some of these are some some new molds and some interesting molds mm. that we can take a look at. But yeah. I think out of all the stuff so far, is the the Cheetor is the thing that is is most intriguing me. Yeah, oh, and I I did I didn't see in the post. Yeah, the Quintesson. I I forgot that the Quintesson uh, that is is the judge, the five faced Quintesson, is a Voyager figure. So this Quintesson might uh, like the speculation is that this is the Alicon figure. We I guess we'll we'll see. I think you're uh, mispronouncing that, Charles. I am not. <laughs> I am pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> Quintesson. That's how you say it. Listen, Charles, language evolves. You know? <laughs> Better evolve with it or get left behind. All right, moving on to Jeremy. Jeremy, what do you think? <laughs> I, I think you are pronouncing it wrong. Just just, just <laughs> tell me what figures you're interested in. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I, I like a lot of these, any new sideswipe is a good thing, in my opinion. I don't know if there was like a diaclone blue version of a, that figure. Wouldn't surprise me if there was. I want to see in the show him have a bandolier and a big gun, though. And Cheetor, I, I think, is interesting. I, I don't really know where they would go with it in terms of the design, but um, we saw things in the comics like turbo foxes and other kind of robotic creatures. It would be interesting to see a maybe like a, a yellow and black spotted cat like animal, but not really looking like an earth cheetah and see how that works. Um, I don't know. But other than that, I mean, we, we've seen a lot of these figures in the other in the siege line. So we kind of know what they are. But the bumblebee, since we haven't seen anything at all, I am hoping beyond hope that we're going to get a Cybertronian alt mode. Hmm. That is something we've never had from Hasbro at all, and I think would be awesome. Although I will still be upset that the Wheeljack isn't the little minivan that he could slide slide into. Well, uh, DJ Ronan just put in the chat, uh, he found a link on Sabertron.com where they do have some packaging art that shows a Bumblebee. It's a pretty G1-looking Bumblebee standing next to Optimus Prime. That's a 
robot mode. I mean, it looks like essentially like the comic. Yeah, we have right now. I mean, my my only uh, I guess uh, concern there is that. I mean, like Daryl said, we already have a cliff jumper, so it's probably a lot easier for Hasbro to just uh, color that one yellow and put a new head on it and call it Bumblebee. I hope I hope you're right, Jeremy. I hope you're right. All right, Daryl, what do you think? Personally, I'm not super excited about a Cheetor. Um, it's not uh, nothing against anybody. It's just I'm not a super huge Cheetor fan. Um, Screw you, Daryl. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Animals should stay at the zoo and not in <laughs> robot form. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's if it's a good figure, if it's got some really cool engineering, I'll probably pick it up. It sometimes really does come down to that. If it's something I'd really like to actually just experience, I'll buy it just because if it does a cool trick, I want to I wanna have it. As far as the other stuff goes, the, the Netflix shows uh, stuff... Uh, it's, so there's going to be, there seems to be a lot of like redos in here. Um, the ones that kind of pique my interest are the impactor. I want the actual good impactor head, uh, for my impactor. I it comes cause I got the Autobot one. It comes with the stupid comic book head. Uh, not the, I don't know what, what head do I have? I have the, uh, not, not the more recent head, not the IDW head, but I have the original Marvel comics head. So it's the square stupid head instead of the, the cool head, um, <laughs> deep cover. I don't care. It's, uh, unless it's a cool figure again, I, I probably won't get it. Red alert. No barricade. No Alita one depends on what it is. I mean, uh, I was not impressed with Alita one being a remold of Starscream or vice versa, whatever, um, turning into a jet like that, it did absolutely nothing for me. I love the character in the comic books. It was cool, badass chick. Uh, not my uh, kind of toy that I was looking for. Uh, Quinnison, cool. Uh, Bumblebee, it, it, Jeremy's right, it's time. The, the fandom's been waiting long enough. There are Bumblebee fans out there, believe it or not. Uh, even after <laughs> the, the amount of time and the amount of like craziness they've just back the, the the Transformers truck up to Bumblebee and just said, here, we're going to do you all the time, you know, as much as Optimus Prime. But yeah, it's uh, it's been out. He hasn't been, you know, made for a, at least a couple years now. And uh, it's time for him to have a, a new uh, Generations release. So, All right, that's all our toy topics. So we will move on to Trips to the Store. This is where we show all the cool Transformers stuff we got this week. We do this as a video so you can see everything we got in beautiful high definition. But we also put the audio right here in the podcast so you can keep listening as we describe everything in loving detail. So without further ado, trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. All right, uh, let's talk about the stuff we got, and we're going to lead it off with Mike. What do you got? All right, it has been a very long time since I've been on the show, but I'm not going to grab every single thing that I've purchased over, what, the last year, two years now? How long has it been? Probably a year. A couple <laughs> months. Yeah. A couple <laughs> months. All right, that's fair. Uh, but I will show off a couple of things I picked up. So got uh, – over here. So I got Brunt, Deluxe Brunt from a uh, from uh, uh, not Earthrise, the one before Earthrise. Siege. Siege. Siege, yes, thank you from Siege. So Brunt, cool figure. Uh, the the guys on the podcast actually picked up a Trypticon for me for my for my birthday back when he was on sale at uh, at not Ollie's but one of the the discount. It uh, was Ollie's. No, it, it was, was Ollie's. Ollie's. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yep. I don't remember approving that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay daryl i approved it so it's okay oh, good. okay <laughs> i guess i wasn't needed i wasn't needed for that we got receipts don't worry <laughs> um so yeah i picked up a uh, brunt to kind of finish up that whole set and got the toy the toy hacks custom stickers for it as well so that was a nice have you put them on i did I... that <laughs> i'll buy them but i'm not putting them on i'm just i don't have that kind of time it, it took, <laughs> I, I want to say it took about four or five hours to do. Yeah. Wow. It's, crazy. it's crazy. With like, with like a little tiny pair of tweezers, just like going on. Do I got it right? Uh, okay, good. Got it. And then getting pissed when I dropped it. 
Yeah. And, <laughs> and I had to buy the uh, the 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 different shaped uh, like tower because I guess the Trypticon I have has the the alternate form like tower. So instead of the towers in the back being the same ones, it's it's a different like sculpt to it. So so that was fun. <laughs> but I picked up the the the, uh, the sticker set for Trypticon and for Full Tilt and that extra little one, so that was good. Didn't pick up the one for Brunt. Uh, I still might go back and do it. I haven't decided yet. I should open my Trypticon uh, sometime. Yep. <laughs> well, you are a Patreon supporter, right? So you uh, <laughs> you're in our draws. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I haven't won yet. It, it's just uh, you know weird. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> weird. Uh, got this guy as well as he falls over. Uh, the Earthrise Hoist. Great knees. Love on this him. guy. Yeah, totally great knees. Look, just look at that. Look at that. Look <laughs> at him do the splits and fall over, or do the limbo and fall over. Uh, I like the figure. I like the the transformation. I like everything about it, except that his knee joints are a little on the wobbly side, and he doesn't. Uh, it doesn't like standing on his own that much. Uh, picked up. Ironworks. Nice. Absolutely love Ironworks. And I am ju- just yesterday, I, I put an order in for a second one just because I've seen all of like <laughs> yeah. the fan mode where it has like two or three versions of like two or three Ironworks on there. And it's just like these, these awesome looking stations and like super armor and everything. It's like, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of weaponizers to start with. So like, I have Cog, I have Brunt, I have uh, Six Gun, but wasn't really something I cared about that much, but then these guys started coming out and it's like, yeah, yeah, all in, all in. Yeah, the MicroMaster bases are great. Yeah, can't wait for the next one, uh, Airwave, and I hope they do unique molds for the the second two, or at least heavy remolds rather than uh, repaints of um, the other two, uh, Grease Pit and Hot House. Yeah, you I think. It. Nice. So yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Almost like I do this professionally. <laughs> Last thing I will show off is this guy here. Now, he may look like a Titan's Return highbrow. However, he is not. He is an oversized knockoff, Voyager sized version of highbrow. Got him for like 13 bucks, and he is better quality than the deluxe highbrow. <laughs> I'm so tempted to spend. The hundred bucks to get the other six, and just have a full shelf of Voyager-sized uh, headmasters. So so good. Do you have the um, the brainstorm from uh, that came out in Thrilling Thirty? That's Voyager. Yes. And so how does it scale to that? I will. If you give me two seconds. I will grab it. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> All the shelves come down now. Well, and, and he knows exactly <laughs> where it is on what shelf. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> uh, so comparing them to to that, uh, the brainstorm is a little bit on the taller side, but not a whole lot. Okay, so they're pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Look, yeah. Look not as chunky there, yeah. as the um, the newer look, but yeah, mm-hmm. certainly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they uh, they scale pretty well. Uh, I think aesthetically they don't match as well, just because the no. the thrilling thirty ones the more IDW kind of scaled yeah. one, and and yeah, these ones are are that. But yeah, I mean, for thir- thirteen bucks for a Voyager that is essentially the same quality, better quality than the the deluxes, I couldn't go wrong. I couldn't say no to that. Mm-hmm. There's one little like extra piece to that too. It's a little hard to to see but there is like a little hinge on this part like where the uh the the tail fin is that was an addition that was not on the the uh, the deluxe version otherwise all of the other stuff is is there so his his rotors do the like will collapse together and they will kind of fold together and all that his legs like his uh, lower legs are are actually metal oh wow is interesting. How do they justify the cost? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, it, it's a knockoff, so well, obviously yeah, the price saying, is going to be still, cheaper. But... It still costs them money to produce. Yeah. yeah, I think it's. I think it's more. We're getting ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, thirteen bucks for that, I I could not, I couldn't say no. And like I said, I'm really really tempted to just drop the, uh, drop the extra hundred to get all other six. And that's a hundred with shipping too. So that's that's, yeah, mm-hmm. hundred bucks for six Voyagers. Yeah, that's that's hard to say no to. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, that's it for me. Who's next, Charles? Uh, I am next. <laughs> cool. Uh, I do not have any new stuff, but I am continuing to show off my Dreamwave comics. Uh, so I've got issue five of Dreamwave Transformers Generation One, number uh, volume one. Uh, Mike so does th- not care, obviously. <laughs> 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 this is the uh, blaster cover with Eject, Steeljaw, and Ramhorn, but no rewind. You probably just that's. Uh, you're yeah. <laughs> gonna have to Probably. ask Mass, Mass, Matt Moylan about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other cover is Soundwave and his well-known cassette. So we've got Another Laserbeak. Early Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there, there's a there's a there's a third retailer incentive cover that I don't have. So yet. <laughs> Was that the Devastator one? Yeah. I think that's the second printing cover. The date oh, okay. So I don't think I still. Can... Still doesn't count. You need the full Shelton. <laughs> well, it, uh, it's only first printing. Yes. He yeah. has it. It's there. <laughs> but yeah, this this sound wave is cool, and we've got Frumble, we've got Ravage, and Laserbeak. So, all right. So that's all I got. Dreamwave covers. Uh, Jeremy, come to you next. All right. Well, I went to this place this week called a comic store. <laughs> I know. I, I didn't actually go in, but I, I had some comics <laughs> that were um, on my pull list that came out the week everything shut down. So uh, I'm calling these my pre-quarantine comics. Um, I have Transformers number 19, Rise of the Decepticons, the Thomas Deere cover. And this is cool. And I, I just realized that when they're now putting this... Um, Character in the the top of here, it makes an eye. I, I never actually mm-hmm. put that together before, uh. but I, I like it. It's kind of reminiscent of the old Marvel box where they would have the character in the box. Um, and looks like the image logo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also picked up Galaxies number six, the you know, awesome Alex Milne cover with stained glass um, look on it. It was great. I, I already read both books, obviously, but nice to one get out of the house and two, you know, actually pick these up. And then uh, my store actually is gonna open up next week for like five people in at a time. So we'll see how that goes. I don't think there's gonna be any new comics for me, but yeah, you know, nice that things are starting to kind of open up. That's all I got. It's nice that your store survived so far. Uh, yeah, my my store has a pretty heavy online like uh, shipping component. So between that and they actually had before everything shut down, they had closed their other location in the city. So like non-pandemic related, I, I think they're doing okay. Mm. That's all I got. All right, Daryl, uh, wrap us up. Bring us home. All right. Well, uh, I had this guy sitting around here this week, and I hadn't actually put him together for a while, so I figured oh, I'll put him. I'll put him together finally. This uh, I posted him on Twitter. This is R.I.D. Landfill. Um, he's a fun character, um, but uh, when I compare him to the other combiner from R.I.D., I just get sad for this guy. Um, because Rail, Rail Racer is just an amazing figure by comparison. But this guy's fun, too. I mean, he's a bunch of different colors. There's a, uh, you know, it's four. It's only four figures to make a combiner. And the, and the weird little, uh, you know, com- uh, connector in the back, like the, the, you know, where three of them connect. And then the, the fourth one kind of stabs in the middle there is, is really kind of interesting. So it's an interesting take on it. I wish it looked a little better, but whatever. It's yeah. fun. Can't you make any of the limbs be any of the other limbs? Yeah. 
Yep, I can. So um, it's easy enough to switch the legs around, obviously. But uh, yeah, you can really uh, you can really move them around, uh, you know, pretty easily. But uh, the arms, I think the arms are pretty much dedicated to being the arms. I don't know. I've really haven't experimented with that. But uh, I think the head's pretty much, yeah. you know, it has to be the head. So uh, the other one that I pulled out today is I'm not sure if I've ever shown them off before, but uh, this is a really fun one. And uh, uh, this was the one I thought was going to, you know, impress Mike. This is Beast Wars 2 Magnetron. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's a fun guy. Uh, combiner of only three characters and all dinosaur related. And uh, yeah, he's fun. Um, so yeah, pretty crazy. I, I have never, uh, never held him in person. I saw him at a convention a couple times, but I've never actually handled one. Yeah. You, you want to? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's cool. Uh, he sticks together pretty well. Um, he's got this uh, this long necked, uh, you know, weird dinosaur thing on the back that uh, you have to kind of wrap around and turn around and then you stick it through the, the, the underneath the wing to kind of rest on the shoulder. So it, it was a bit of a, of a hassle to kind of figure out how, to, how, it, how it sat, but it's fun and cool. Uh, he's got a couple missiles that tab into the wings there that, you know, you can lose fairly easily. Um, and, uh, and then there's another missile here. This, uh, this sword is actually a gun, so it fires this so sword blade. So nothing. Yeah. There's a sword gun. Oh gun yeah. Sword. <laughs> yeah. So he's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's full of parts that can easily be lost, but he's a, he's a fun figure. And, uh, um, I think individually they all kind of suck, but he's meant to be combined. So, so yeah, all three combined make Magmatron and, and he's pretty badass looking. But that's it. That's all I have this week. All right. Uh, well, I guess that will do it for Trips to the Store. We now return to the Transmissions Podcast. All right. We're back from our Trips to the Store. And let's move on to convention news. All right. Uh, we have... Some interesting convention news this week. Uh, in the middle of last week, after we had recorded on Sunday, TF Nation announced that this year's show, unfortunately, was going to have to be canceled. And Daryl and I recorded something uh, about it uh, for our Donatrions. Just kind of our, our initial quick thoughts. And uh, I think we talked more about just the overall state of the world. Um, cause you know, Daryl and I can, you know, it, between him and me, we can solve the world problems. Yeah. We're, we're pretty good. So, um, but anyway, uh, today TF nation posted on Twitter an image with a uh, blaster playing some sound waves haha, saying the big broadcast of 2020. And that's all they have right now. Um, just saying 15 August, 2020. Uh, they will be doing something online, guest schedule, and more to be announced in the coming weeks. So first of all, I, I would like to thank TF Nation for doing an announcement on the day we re we normally record. Uh, that That is a very awesome of you guys. We appreciate it. But more seriously, uh, I think this is cool. Obviously, it's going to be some kind of online convention. And details, uh, you know, we, we have nothing other than this image and what they posted, but uh, Daryl, since uh, you know we were talking about the end of this year's convention, what what do you think of this? Oh, I think it's uh, it's good. Uh, they're still trying to maintain a connection with their fan base. They're trying to keep their convention name in the uh, in the discussion. The people who had already kind of you know made a you know commitment to that date, they're they're going to try and honor that with some kind of content. I think it's great, you know, and. Uh, we were talking about it on the on the little you know extra that we did, but it's a it's just a a, a small thing that a convention can do. Like uh, and what we mentioned was that it's, they're not going to make any money, but it's it's something that they're going to be able to do to just kind of keep their fans happy because we all know everyone's in this together. 
but we can all still kind of do shit, uh, you know, to kind of keep uh, each other entertained. And I think one thing that we've all kind of talked about wanting to go to TF Nation at some point and being in the U.S., it's hard for us to do that, especially right now. You know, you can't really travel much of anywhere, but this will kind of give everyone a taste of what TF Nation is. Charles, what are you? What are your thoughts? Are you going to tune in to the big broadcast? Yes, I'm going to tune in. I am excited about this. I'm happy to be able to take part in TF Nation, uh, to, you know, from across the pond when usually I cannot get a chance to go. So I'm looking forward to it. We actually had some feedback. I would forgotten to read this before uh, we got into the big broadcast stuff. Uh, Nathan Webb sent us a comment on our Patreon post about the, um, the thing Daryl and I did. And he said, uh, hey, I was planning on selling comics and art at TF Nation. I think everyone had re realized already that this was going to happen and it's the right thing to do. Everyone's thinking short term right now, but I'm starting to wonder if this will change convention forever. Uh, and then we have this news. Um, but Mike, before we get to your thoughts, uh, Yoshi actually recorded something in response to Nathan. So I wanted to play that. We have a message from Patreon donator Nathan Webb who is asking about what the future of conventions will look like. I can't tell you what the future of conventions will look like for the long term. I can see short term. I can see two to three years, I think. And I think the standard operating procedure for conventions for that time is going to be handing out disposable masks and requiring you to wear them. I just I think that's how it's going to be. I also don't know when conventions are really going to pick up again. I know some states are opening up, but, you know, going to a restaurant has a different effect on society than going to a convention that has a thousand plus people at it. So uh, I think masks are going to be requir a requirement for that. I'm seeing that in stores here where I live. There are some grocery stores that won't even let you enter unless you're going to wear a mask you brought or one that they provide. And I just think that's going to be the norm for a while, especially with conventions if they have them. Chicago is a hotbed right now for the coronavirus. And I don't see, I personally don't see TFCon Chicago happening. I would love to go to that. I've, I've you know, I've got, re I've got tickets I've got to use from TFCon Orlando that my airline is telling me I have to use before the year's out. And I don't think uh, using them for Chicago is, is going to work. I just don't see Chicago actually happening the way it's going. You know, and I've, I've got a, a wife who's a nurse, who's an operating room nurse, who's dealing with it, who's dealt with COVID patients, who's worried about bringing the virus home. She's worried about when I have to go to the grocery store that I'm going to get her infected and that she's going to pass that on to patients. You know, it's, it's not a pretty picture right now. And I just, I can't see a mass gathering of convention goers happening without masks being a mandatory thing for the next two to three years. Uh, that's my two cents. Uh, it's just my opinion. Uh, do with it what you will. All right. Uh, Mike, um, what do you think? Do you, I mean, do you think we're going to be having more online conventions initially or like Yoshi suggesting we're going to have uh, any kind of in-person thing is going to be vastly different. I do think that short term, it's it's going to be difficult to to deal with conventions, even if even if in terms of like legality and and, and local ordinances are uh, say that you know a city or a state, a city or a county or a state or a province can open up. Even if that, I think that a lot of people are still going to be very, very shy about going to these kind of places. And I think it is going to depend a lot on, on area as well. But yeah, I mean, in, in short term, it would not surprise me if just the rest of the year, like 100%, no conventions at all, like, like just nothing. And then mm -hmm. starting, uh, starting in like 2021, maybe I see, I do see the classic convention scene returning at some point. And it might, and I hate to say it, I hate to be this kind of like alarmist, but 
it could be that it might be like two years down the line before we start seeing that kind of, of normalcy return. I'm hoping that that masks become a common, a, a fairly common thing, even even once all of this is is kind of passed, because it, especially in the United States, uh, whenever people get sick, and this I think is more just a cultural thing. Uh, the U.S., you know, citizens of the U.S. just don't like wearing masks, even if they were sick. And I hope, if anything, that changes long term. And if someone really is just not feeling good or sick, that they they wear a mask when they go outside. It's just kind of common yeah. courtesy. I mean, that, that's like very common in Asian countries. And yeah, absolutely. It might be a good thing for us to adopt. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And like I said, it, I think... Even if that's the only thing that really gets adopted or changed, then, um, then that's it's then that's certainly a good thing for it. But I do agree with Yoshi. Short term, I I do see mask as becoming a, a more common thing. And but I mean I don't I personally I don't think that we're going to see conventions by by the end of the year. I again even if the states or the provinces, whatever the case may be, even if they are opened up like officially opened. I think people are still just going to be too too shy about going to these places. So, I mean, I would think probably early 20 or like the convention season for 2021 is going to be a good measure of of how this kind of all comes together. And I hope that it kind of comes back to uh to normalcy, but um but yeah, I I certainly think it's going to be at, at least probably another year before we actually see people comfortable enough to go out in large crowds like this one thing i i think i i see you know we see online things right now they're just open to the public i'm wondering if the next iteration of this is maybe a mixture of some free stuff and some exclusive stuff so you know they will be bringing in some money you know and have a paywall i would hope that they wouldn't paywall everything because you want to be able to give people a taste before we get back to a lot of in-person stuff. I could see that as a way for conventions to keep their names out there and bring in some money. It's an, an interesting idea. I I don't want to say I, I wouldn't like it, but that's also something that I don't think I'd really want to pay for unless mm-hmm. I got something more out of it. Like I have no problem paying for a convention because it's a significant experience. But right. Paying to sit at home and watch a, a an online convention for, for me it's that's certainly not not for me but yeah I, I'm having they difficulty would have to offer a lot. yeah it, it would definitely have to offer something more than I guess just panels I, I don't know like I'm struggling to kind of see what that would look like maybe some swag like t-shirt lanyard stuff like that just but. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they would they would have to offer something, but I could just they're they're gonna have to do something to bring in money to essentially stay in business. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that is convention news. We'll have more updates on you know TF Nation as they announce them. All right, and we will finish up the show with some feedback. All right, we got some uh, late uh, late bit of feedback from uh, Donatrion John 4x11 good. He put a note in our Discord chat uh because he was a uh, uh you know, he was listening last week to our discussion about uh, where we're going to put the well where of me and Epic we're going to put our Unicron when it came in. Uh so John uh, is actually in on the Unicron as well, so uh, he says, uh, this required a photo, so my feedback is here rather than uh, my customary voicemail. I am a Unicron backer, and when my wife said yes to Unicron, I knew exactly where he was going to go. After seeing the Unicron update photos from Hasbro, that hadn't changed. Uh, I plan on putting him on display on this entertainment center. It's about three and a half feet tall with a top around two and a half foot square. I made this entertainment center in the late 2000s to fit in a specific area of my old house. It is solid wood and should have no problem handling Unicron's weight and size. Hell, it handles my weight and size, and I'm not a small person either. Thanks again for a great show. And he did include a picture in the Discord chat, so 
Uh, you can join the Transmissions Discord, uh, although you have to be a Donatron to look at the chat for that particular channel. Thanks, John, for showing off your picture. And uh, I'm glad you're uh, you're able to put it right in your uh, you know in your living room. That's that's a, a prominently displayed in your house. That's cool. Where are you putting yours? Uh, in the basement <laughs> with the other Transformers. You need to put them in planet mode and just hanging from the ceiling in your living room <laughs> as a centerpiece. <laughs> do you have a chandelier in your dining room? Sorry, I do have a chandelier in my foyer, not in, not in the living room. Foyer. <laughs> I said you can move your 70-inch TV. <laughs> he did. Right he put a 75-inch TV in this place. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chandelier is going to have to come down, and Unicron is going to have to go there instead. It's just how it is. You can put some LEDs in it. Yeah. Know, it just works. put a speaker constantly playing Unicron's theme whenever someone enters the house. Badass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a motion sensor, too. <laughs> That wouldn't get old at all. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, that's uh, thanks, John. It, it would certainly bring chaos into your house. <laughs> <laughs> your wife would hate it. <laughs> a chaos raven. Whoa. Oh, that's a callback to the restart of the show. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we've gone on long enough. Uh, I feel sorry for whoever has to edit this show. <laughs> hate you. Oh, my hate. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that's all the feedback for this week. And uh, that'll do it for this episode of Transmissions. Mike, thanks for joining us. Uh, other than Empire of Rust, which you can find at transmissionspodcast.com slash rust. Is there anything else that you'd like to, you know, tell our listeners about? Uh, yeah, you can uh, follow me on Twitter. It is at Minervian, M-I-N-E-R-V-I-O-N on uh, Twitter. Uh, to be fair, I'm not that active on it, but uh, if someone posts something, uh, usually someone will uh, will tell me about it. So, yeah, go ahead and give me a follow on that. And certainly go to transmissionspodcast.com slash rust. Uh, or wherever you get your podcast from, give Empire of Rust a, a listen. It is a a really good show, I think. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Plugging my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this part of the show is for. That's a <laughs> the world's first and only Transformers RPG podcast. And best. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye. Later. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you again next week. That was had to have been killing Charles. Had to have been killing him to not know <laughs> I, whether fine. everyone hit to everyone hit the uh, hit the button or not. Did you hit it? Did everyone hit it? I don't know. I have to wait. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just gave, I just gave an extra two was, seconds just for a buffer. That's all. We were being generous. Mike. I was just going to see how long Charles would go. Oh well, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Take your gift and just be happy, Mike. <laughs> And shove it. <laughs> I'm never happy. <laughs> you can slot it in there. I know you're kind of, you're good. You're a doctor. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it, but okay. <laughs> well, you, you're an engineer. Also has nothing to do with it. <laughs> you have a mouse in your hand. <laughs> That's closer. <laughs> Actually, he's on a laptop. <laughs> Hold on one second. I think my kids are about to uh, audio bomb the podcast. Let me make sure everything's okay. <laughs> Backup is recording. <laughs> yeah, leave the mic hot. <laughs> oh, he muted it. I just, uh, he's just like that clip of him where he says, um,
where he's telling Yoshi off. That's like I'm I'm sure he's just just ripping into this kids now. <laughs> God damn it, Yoshi! That's right. He's just tear tear ass in the, through the house. I mean, he's so thin now. He's like light as a feather. He can just jump from floor to floor. Oh yeah, he's got to be beating those kids right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you could throw them in like the Dropbox. Oh, I thought you meant the kids. That might, no. <laughs> the, um, the clips. It might be easier for me to grab because it's hard to find them in Discord after the fact. It's what he calls his basement, the Dropbox. <laughs> that's No, that's what he puts it's what he calls the room behind his chair. The punishment hole. <laughs> the, it's the door behind his chair on the uh, trips to the store. It's his Dropbox. <laughs> we always wanted to know what, that, what that door was for. Now we know. Yeah, now the kids are dealt with. They're in the Dropbox, and now he's just, he's got to take it out on the wife for interrupting his podcast. Switches into a uh, to a wife beater, grabs a beer. <laughs> yeah, tears the sleeves off his t-shirt and uh, comes back down. <laughs> he just puts on a new t-shirt, just tears the <laughs> sleeves off of it. <laughs> yeah. That's why we always got to send him new shirts. I can't have a shirt with sleeves. I told you, woman, my shirts ain't got no, have no sleeves. Now go get me a beer and tear my sleeves off. <clears throat> I heard everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mike made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I heard you, I know he didn't. <laughs> Did you get a beer for the rest of us? Yeah. <laughs> and are we right about the little door behind you on uh, trips to the store? Uh, no, it's a bad drop. And when did you stop getting your bed, it's a box? No. It's... <laughs> I'm gonna send him like a mail him a sign now just to hang up on there, just called the drop box. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, we can just like Photoshop it into the trips to the store video. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mike, make a note. That's an edit point. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, make a note. That's a outtake. <laughs> and just for good measure, we'll put it in the front of the show. That was five minutes there, Charles. Sorry. Let's, uh, yeah. let's get back on schedule here. <laughs> All right. All right, Daryl. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I don't introduce you anymore. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, screwed me up. Now I need I need about <laughs> yes. I need five seconds. Now you know how it feels. I need five seconds of silence just to put myself back. <laughs> <laughs> we we can't be spreading false news on the podcast, Charles. <laughs> yeah, Americans won't stand for anyone spouting false news <laughs> day to day. Well, not regarding their, their toys. <laughs> Some things are sacred, Charles. <laughs> so, shit, who was next? Charles? <laughs> yes. That was you? Okay. All right. Well, uh, that is all my toy topics. And that will move. Well, let me start that over. That was terrible. Okay. <laughs> DJ Ronan says that he can hear me, so let's go. That's fantastic. But before Mike's video cuts out again. Yeah. <laughs>